Okay, so my name is Coco Eva. I'm Tara Singh. My name is Edwin Salas. I'm Joseph. Joseph Anthony Pearson. My name is Juan Diego Reyes. My name is Teresa. My name is Marcos Martinez. My name is Gloria Estrada. My name is Serenity and I am 17 years old and my pronouns are she and her. My name is Melanie Gutierrez. I am 18 years old and I have been a part of on the street since it began. So around four to five years. And I am currently living in El Salvador. I, I have several mediums, media. One primarily is painting, oil painting. I also work in charcoal, pastel pencil. I paint portraits as paint people as portraits and figures. The chosen mediums are painting and drawing and writing and singing. Um, I'm a puppeteer for near 20 years, but I'm not only a puppeteer. I am toy maker. I make dance. I make the different kind of things. The forms of art that I like are dance, music, writing, and photography, and painting. I have been a painter sculptor for over 16 years and I've worked on a lot of public art and had many, many shows um, nationally and internationally. I've been a photographer for seven years now. I'm a painter and I paint nature and I also paint what comes out of my imagination and sometimes I mix both. I'm a visual artist as well as a singer, songwriter, and a writer. And I think my visual art media is whatever feels right depending on the piece that I'm working on. My favorite form of art is writing, especially poetry. I love to read poems because it makes me think that I'm reading like from the author's point of view and like their beliefs, their opinions, and I find that really interesting. Um, really, it's just like the buildup of emotion just like in me needing to like express it in some way and my hands are just like, yeah, this is how we want to do it. <laughs> mi inspiración para hacer arte es um, todo a mi alrededor. O sea, me refiero a todas las personas me inspiran, el lugar donde vivo, um, lo que estudio ahora que es visual arts. When I see other artwork, that is kind of what inspires me or it's kind of like a chain reaction. It gets me to start thinking and then I have my own perspective or I have my own view about it. So then I want to, to, um, to you know, show my view and stuff like that in a different way. Uh, I guess just like everything basically. I mean, like sometimes I see things and it just like... I don't know, it like sparks off ideas. The way that I express myself is through translating. Um, I love to translate and I sometimes translate some of the things that go up on the website. May it be a poem that one of the squad members wrote or a story or just a description of a, of a painting that one of them has done. It is definitely um the connectedness that I find in nature that resonates with uh, my creativity. I'd say there are various things that give me inspiration. Um, primarily it's a way of engaging with the world. The camera is an excuse to go places and try to understand um, different cultures, people, ways of living, and also it's a way for me to express my own view of the world. Art for me, from the earliest age, I'm going back to maybe four or five, has always been for me a source of solace, a source of refuge. It offers me a uh, peace of mind. Especially, especially now, you know, during these trying times. But I grew up as an extremely shy kid. So art for me was always a way of finding my own little world. 
my own little sanctuary, you might say. My art is helpful to me because it like, whenever I do art, it's relaxing and it's just like a way to escape the world, but. Oh, I, I really um, believe that art is a social transformational force. Um, and for me, it served me to kind of like decolonize and do some um, liberation work of internalized oppression for me. Um, so it's been a healing force um, of transformation internally. And um, yeah, I, I think that's my hope is that it also brings that feeling for the world. My inspiration of translating is that I believe that everyone should have should have the right um, of knowing what's being said, what's being written, um, and it doesn't matter in which language it is. May it be something that's written in Spanish for it to be translated in English so that English speaking people can understand. The same goes, vice versa. If something is written in English for it to be translated in Spanish, so that the Spanish-speaking community can know what's being said, what's being written. Also, when I dream, I see nothing but colors, and that is a big inspiration for a lot of my painting. Um, I paint out the colors that I see. And I think that's um, really, in a way, one of the best ways that my art is used. Um, I think the best use is definitely this event because other than that I don't really use it for anything and the worst use was probably just like whenever I throw it away or just like I like give it to someone and they're like and they lose it and it's just so sad. One of the best ways that my, my art has been used um, is Last year, the squad members, um, I remember they wrote about themselves. Some of them, they did it in a poem, some of them in a story, and the prompt that they had was, who am I? Quien soy? And they were all amazing. They were all well written, and most of them, actually, they wrote it in the form of a poem or a story and it was really interesting how I read like I I read every single one of them and how they express themselves in so many different ways and I remember that I translated all of them all of the squad members um, uh, right and it was difficult it was challenging but it was amazing. Um, creo que no ha habido ninguna peor manera, sinceramente. Um, de la mejor manera creo que he, he inspirado a personas, incluso a mi hermana, porque ella no, es, ella no está mucho en, en así como en el arte, pero aún así ella hace arte. Well, it's in the back of my community, for example, I make here in the United States, my first two performances I did is talk about the immigration. The first performance is called Seven Deadly Sins in the Border to talk about the future of the immigration, um, something so political, and the other is like a far satir, satiric, satiric performance about the politic situation too. One is more dramatic, the other is more uh, more funny, if we can tell. And yes, the impact is we tried to make think of the people, because my performance watch most like a white people, and the people say, oh my gosh, this problem exists that they know, but at the same time, I feel here in the United States, a lot of people don't, don't want to see the really things to happen. It's more easy to say, oh, all is good. One of my initiatives is called Hashtag Human, and my goal in um, creating that line, it's to simplify things, it was kind of a focus on leveling the playing ground, like it doesn't matter what your race, gender, 
um, religion, like instead of looking at how we are separate, it was to kind of look at the fact that we're all having a human experience and deserve respect. I think right now where I am in my career as an artist and visual storyteller and having the ability to work in mediums and with publications that give me the ability to spread my work to a wider audience. Um, I hope helps create some kind of perspective and the ultimate hope is for it to bring about some kind of change even if it's at the most local level. Um, and that's, I mean, that's what I strive to do with my art in general um, and storytelling. It is definitely that um, I always emphasize nature and it, it does resonate with uh, how people here, I feel that are more conscious compared to other um, countries here in, in, or even here within the USA, here in, in this area, Western North Carolina, people I find that are a little bit more conscious. So when they see what I'm creating, in, you know, they identify themselves with it. Podemos usar el arte para expresar cómo nos sentimos, en especial ahorita que es, um, bueno, ya no es tan cuarentena, pero aún hay personas que sufren o se sienten encerrados y así. Y creo que para eso lo pueden usar, en especial porque no tienen con nadie con quien hablar o sus amigos. I think that art really can save uh, the people of the solitude. For what reason? Because you can make a different net between the artists and between the other people to don't know how to do in this moment. And the people feel with a lot of anxiety to say, well, now what happened with the future? Well, you can make these same questions, not with cigarettes, alcohol, and drugs. You can make the same question with art. I think right now, art can be a form of resistance, can be a form of documentation, um, in what feels like a very historical moment, monumental moment for, for humankind. So, you know, as always, art has been um, a voice to provide context um, and to bring about some kind of understanding in ways that perhaps we're not able to gain in other ways. Um, so yeah, I think art is resistance. I think that's primarily what it can be used for right now. I feel like uh, as a communication or an outlet, we have so much stress built up with ourselves and with other people that we just need an outlet. If that's through dance or music or whatever. Um, I feel like people of color just really need to tap into artwork a little bit more. And that is actually where I would like to see it happen more. Art is being used all throughout these difficult times. Um, I really, I really think that artists are, you know, like we're, we're turning to creativity all the time to cope with what's happening in one form or another, whether it's streamlined and commercialized art or or it's a more personal um, process to relation to art, but it's, you know, it, it captures and reflects the process that we are in consistently throughout history. Regardless of what is commercial or hobby, art still serves that purpose. I think it's especially important now that folks have this creative outlet to allow them to express some of the anxiety and frustrations with this lockdown COVID situation, with the mounting death toll, you know, and the stress that is placing upon all of us. I think art allows folks, and it's not about trying to make uh, a masterpiece. It's just using your own innate creativity to express yourself. 
And this could be in any form. It could just be scribbling, you know, just to express that emotion. However it comes out, it doesn't matter. You don't have to show it to anybody. It's just a matter of using your own innate creativity to express whatever you might be feeling in whatever way that comes out. Positively, <laughs> positively, of course. I think we can use them to really just let go of everything. You can just like sit in a room and make art and not have to think about anything political or COVID or anything and just like let your hands guide you. I think it's just truly really beautiful how our creativity can have an impact in others' lives. The way we can use art is we don't have to have technically talk, verbally talk. We can express ourselves through a painting. I like to see more public art, more art in spaces like this, community centers. I like to see, of course, Asheville is full of public art. You have murals all over the place, but especially in places like this, community centers, because it makes it accessible to the community. A lot of folks will not go to a museum or a gallery, but those who uh, those who come here, especially kids, I think it'd be a, a good environment to expose kids not only to their arts, but to encourage them to exercise their own creativity. I like to see more art in community spaces. Um, I like to see more artists given the opportunity to also expand their medium and their audience, um, especially people of color who you know, at least in the medium of photography, have always been kind of put to the sides. Um, you know, photography historically has been mostly through the gaze of the white male. And I think there's a movement that's changing and shifting that right now. So I just, whether it's in a more communal space or in a larger way, I would like to see um, just more diversity and inclusion in the art world in general. I would definitely like to see more art like in a school setting because I realized that on like walls of schools it just looks like they're just like cinder blocks <laughs> and they don't have like any color or anything and it'd be nice if they like had like you know just like paintings and like actual like artwork that it wasn't just from students just as like inspiration. Um, art that that includes everyone. Um, maybe Hispanics, Asians, black people, just the black community, just everyone. In our communities, um, because I see it, I see it in, you know, like the young adult age, like maybe like 20 to like the 30s, 20s and 30s, but like anybody younger, I don't really see artwork from them. In realidad, no he thought about that. I feel like everything around me is art. Eh, aunque inconscientemente no lo vemos. Being an artist is definitely, I feel like a career that is um, a journeyman process and having mentors is very important. Uh, it gives you a whole new perspective on learning to see. I would love to see more art on the streets, on buildings, and, and art made by black indigenous people of color. Where? <laughs> Everywhere, I think. <laughs> Everywhere, really. It's, uh, it's really beautiful how, you know, like, when you go to a cafe and see a piece of art, it makes you feel like, wow, what is this? What does that mean? And that expands your imagination. And I think art is, should be everywhere. Mm -hmm.